well, this is just the way my life is. It's, I'm really not going to get free of this. That actually is a demonic spitting. Things will never change. Where you can't progress. You can't seem to overcome in this one region. It's a heavy weight. It's a yoke of burden that doesn't allow you to stand up to your full height. Who's ever felt burdens that you know there's more in you than what you're actually living? You know that there's more in you. You know that you're bigger than that. You know, but you just can't seem to reach your destiny. You just can't seem to stand up to your full height. It is a demonic infirmity that has been released upon us. That's why we need the Holy Spirit to be aggressive in his actions. That's why we need the Holy Spirit to be violently involved with who we are and what we do. We need that, not just what we think help is, but what it actually says it is in the original language. That enemy, that demonic spitting, saps our boldness. We stop being bold. We stop being courageous. We stop speaking out about Jesus or whatever it might be. We stop standing up for the truth. And the whole goal of this demonic whipping, demonic spitting is to bring us into agreement with the infirmity. If we are in agreement with the infirmity, guess what? There'll be no victory because we've come into agreement with the enemy. Because we've agreed that, you know what, for somebody else God might do it, but he's not going to really do it for me. And so we're stuck in this thing and nothing's ever going to set me free. And this is just the way life is and I can't see it ever changing. And I can't see financial increase coming or I can't see this, this sickness or disease leaving my body. We just lose all hope. We lose all sight of what God has promised. And we've actually come into agreement with an infirmity that is demonically inspired. And the Holy Spirit has been brought alongside of you to actively get involved in your life, to present your case before God, to champion your cause, to heave on that thing with you, to set you free. Because the last thing that I want is to come into an agreement with an infirmity. But he is a glorious intruder. So looking at some of the things that he does as he helps, as he intercedes, he throws himself into my cause. He throws himself into it. Have you got a, you know, got a friend that will come along when you're going through something difficult, like... I don't know what it might be. I will use Danielle as an example because she's awesome for me. But sometimes, you know, when I'm struggling to get something done and she's just as tired as I am, she will throw herself into what I'm doing to free me up so I can get back to prayer. She's incredible. She throws herself into it even though she's as tired as I am, even though she's got a longer to-do list than I have. She will throw herself into it to, to help me. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He throws himself into your case, into your cause, so that he can get you set free. He will guide your prayers. Not only will he guide your prayers, but he's actually praying for you alongside of Jesus right now. He interferes in your life to bring about um, divine breakthrough. The Holy Spirit will interfere. He will bring into, into what they call them interventions, spiritual interventions, so that you can be set right. He will shock us into an awareness of who we really are in Christ. Shock us into our identity. He will shock us into our destiny, if that's what needs to be done. He will discomfort us if we are too comfortable where we are, if we are reclining in our infirmity thinking, oh, well, I'm just going to have to put up with this for the rest of my life. He will shock us into an awareness. He will discomfort us. He will push us out of the past, present scenarios that we have in our mind all the time. This is what, I, this is what I've come from. This is where I am. And he's going to push us into the present future. He changes our scenarios. He will change us if we allow him. He will rub me the wrong way to get me to go the right way. 
He will ruffle my feathers so I soar like an eagle instead of strut around like a turkey. Right? Come on. Some of this uncomfortable stuff we go through, we think it's the enemy. Just stop and discern. Is this the Holy Spirit rubbing you the wrong way to get you to go the right way? Is he ruffling your feathers so that you start to soar like an eagle? Is he bellowing you? Is he pushing you out to face something so that you get the victory? The Holy Spirit is amazing and mighty and wonderful and glorious and powerful and passionate and and so in love with you, zealous over you, jealous for you. He just wants the best for you. But you know what? We relegated him to the third person of the Godhead instead of they're all God. We've relegated him and think of him as the dove. We've got to be careful around the Holy Spirit. Man, we can quench him. We can grieve him. Oh, my gosh, I can even be bless, blaspheme him and I can never be forgiven. But we've never looked past that, really, to how amazing he is, that he really wants to champion your cause, that even right now, as he's interceding for you, he's before the judge of the courts of heaven and he's laying out your case along with the voice of the blood of Jesus Christ in agreement with the prayers of Jesus, praying for you, laying it out before you. We think it all relies upon us. It is all about how much we pray and what we do and how much we it's got nothing to do with that. That's the that's what does have, but it doesn't. The important thing is he's doing it. I rely upon his prayers, not mine. Father, if you're going to listen to any prayers about my life, listen to his. Right, listen to Jesus. Listen to the Holy Spirit. And if I happen to be in agreement with them, awesome. If not, they're the ones I want you to pray. Answer them, right? Answer those prayers. Answer them. Pull me into line with their prayers. You know, you've got to understand he's powerfully passionate about you. He's wanting to get the members of your family saved that aren't saved. He's wanting to pull in the prodigals. He's wanting to do all of these things. But we think of him and we've relegated him. We talk about a new wineskin. We talk about being filled with new wine. But in reality, we've relegated him. And I'm not talking about people here, but church in general, we've relegated him. to a peripheral. He's on the sidelines. Occasionally we might move in the gifts. Occasionally we might live in the fruit. But we've not really honoured the Holy Spirit because we haven't understood his job description. He is the governor of God upon the earth. He is God's governance upon the earth. The kingdom of God is not what we eat and drink, but it's righteousness, righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. He's the spirit of truth, spirit of war, spirit of judgment, spirit of burning, spirit of love. There's so many different titles for the Holy Spirit. And he's wanting you to know him. He is inviting us on a journey of intimacy to get to know the Holy Spirit. To get to know him so that we can flow with him. So that we can truly ascend and be able to take that assignment from that ascension and bring it about in in the right manifestation. A lot of times now we know that we're ascended, that we've come to Zion, we know that. And and some of us are there constantly and others are still like trying to get there, trying to like practice practice it for want of a better word. But there's an element of the Holy Spirit that takes you further and deeper and richer and there's such a wholeness in him and we've not allowed him to be him we've not really opened up the space like if he wants to roar against the enemy let him if he wants to groan through you in your prayer time let him
If he wants to tickle you with an angel feather so that you're rolling around on the floor laughing, you probably need the joy of the Lord in a big dose. Take it. We need the Holy Spirit. If he wants to worship through us. Yes. And he's the one who worships through us. Like there's no way I can worship in spirit and in truth. Like I'm still imperfect. I'm still a mix of new creation, unrenewed soul. So I can desire to worship in spirit and in truth. But I need the Holy Spirit who is the spirit and is truth in order to do it. He is the best. Absolutely the best. And he's inviting all of you into a richer, deeper relationship. Wouldn't it be awesome to be able to speak knowing that the Holy Spirit himself has put the words in your mouth, that he's anointed those words, and that when they come out, they'll pierce the hearts of your listeners. Wouldn't it be amazing if you really heard the Holy Spirit and he'd say, just go and lay your hand on that person's shoulder as you walk past and you release a blessing or a healing. He's amazing. And he's the one who brings his super, God's super, into our natural. And we can't be a new wineskin filled with new wine unless we know him. And he's inviting us to know him more, deeper, richer. There's just no end to the Holy Spirit. He's like God, no beginning, no end, just is. Just is. And he loves you. And you are his assignment. He has been called alongside of you to bring you into your destiny, to cause you to be everything that God wants you to be, to set you free from infirmities, weaknesses, 